If you could play exactly like anybody in the NBA, who would you pick and why? Drop your answers in the comment section. And while you're there, you might as well like the video and subscribe to the channel. To all new and returning subscribers, Big Lottie Gang, what's good? Welcome back to our film breakdown series, Big Lottie Breakdowns, where we're taking a deep dive into our favorite and most iconic basketball movies, breaking them down, and putting them in a tier list at the end of the video. And today's special, because today's movie is Like Mike, not Like Mike 2. We talking the original Like Mike, starring only the greatest rapper to ever live, Lil Bow Wow. <laughs> hey, don't sleep. Bow Wow was essential to the culture. Him, Romeo, Allen Iverson, you know. <laughs> It was truly a golden era of cornrows back in the early 2000s. Now we all know Like Mike is a timeless classic, but could you go as far to say that this is the perfect basketball movie? Let's take a dive and find out. So we start off the movie getting introduced to Lil Bow Wow and immediately we could tell that he's a basketball fanatic. All of us on this channel can relate to that. He's outside with his crew and they shooting hoops and he is garbage. He is ass. Like, oh my God, they didn't make a single shot. Everything was brick after brick after brick. Forget a house. You would have thought they was building a whole neighborhood development complex, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of their brick session, the camera zooms out and we find out that they're at an orphanage. So that's it's like the most subtle emotional bomb that they could have dropped on us. Like, oh, look at this guy. He's so trash at basketball. <laughs> Did you know that his parents are dead though? Yeah, bet you feel bad now, don't you? Oh my God. Now, despite being trash, Lil Bow Wow, I mean, his character's name is Calvin Cambridge. So we gonna put some respect on his character's name, but I'm gonna continue to refer to him as Lil Bow Wow. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, even though he's trash, he does have the utmost confidence and carries himself like he's a real hooper, which I can respect. So when the next scene hits and the bully of the orphanage comes up to him and starts challenging him to a 1v1 for his Allen Iverson jersey. And side note, the old G throwback Sixers Allen Iverson jersey and look here if you, if you putting that on the line you gotta be some type of nice you gotta be tough Calvin is not Lil Bow Wow is not like <laughs> oh my god Ox came over punked him yo let me play you 1v1 for your jersey and Lil Bow Wow had this big inspirational speech talking about look I, I, I can take him I mean Kobe would have never backed down from no challenge Allen Iverson wouldn't back down from no challenge and Michael Jordan sure as heck ain't backing down from no challenge and neither is Calvin Cambridge and I'm watching the movie I'm like yeah Talk your shit, Cal. Talk your shit. Man, Calvin came out. He got ball first. He got ball first. Dribble, dribble, spin move. Tried to go for the fadeaway and got his shit sent all the way to South Africa. Oh, my God. We need reparations after that one because Ox took his jersey and then ripped it up right in front of him. Like, why are you being such a hoe about? Like, I never liked Ox. And they tried to give him some redemption at the end. Not going to hold you. Still not rocking with him for real. I'm not really rocking with him, but we'll get to that point when, when it's time. Now, after Calvin gets his ass whooped for his jersey, we are introduced to what I consider the main villain. I guess, no, I guess it's a popular opinion. Like, he is the main antagonist of the movie. The head of the orphanage, Mr. Biddleman. And I'm not gonna lie, just looking at his haircut makes me mad. Like, I, I, like he, you just look at him, you just feel like he's just some snake-ass slime ball. And I'm not gonna hold you. I'm keeping an eye on him because why is this grown-ass man spending all this time around these kids that he don't give a fuck about? Excuse my language, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm very passionate about this movie though. Now all the orphans are chilling in the living room or whatever the common area for them is and Biddleman comes in, turns off the TV, shuts everything down and says let's get to work. He drives them all the way to the Staples Center where the Lakers and the Clippers and apparently in this movie the LA Knights play. Now I'm pretty sure that they just couldn't afford to get the rights to the Lakers or Clippers to have like their name, image, likeness, whatever you want to call it or whatever it's called at the business level. You know they, they could afford the the copyrights of the team for the whole movie so they had to make up their own fake team and don't get me wrong it, it's not really that big of a deal especially when you see the amount of real NBA team and real NBA players they were able to get involved in this movie but he drives them all the way to the Staples Center outside of the Knights game and he got the orphans out there slaving away selling chocolate in the parking lot to the fans that are coming into the game oh my god this 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 is what are the child labor laws and then on top of that they not getting paid and they don't even know where the money is going. They're out there pulling every lie out of their asses, some of them, and just hustling. They really out here trying to make a quick dollar, and it's not the orphan's fault. It's the, it's Middleman's fault. Off the rip, you can tell nobody is ever gonna like this character. 
<laughs> now in the process of them selling all this chocolate, they're also watching the game on the Jumbotrons outside of the arena. And I didn't know that those were a real thing. Somebody let me know in the comments if that's a real thing at this timestamp in the video too, please. But you know, they're watching the game and we're introduced to the fake stars of the LA Knights. There's no real NBA players on that roster as far as I'm concerned. And based on the research that I've done on the LA Knights, scratch that I ain't done no research. I I've just been watching the movie, not gonna lie to you. <laughs> but we're introduced to the star of the LA Knights who is Tracy Reynolds, played by Morris Chestnut. So I guess they got some sex appeal for the ladies, you know, get, getting all the fan bases involved, getting getting the mom to, to take their kids to see Like Mike. Cause the kids, we going to see a hoop movie. They going to see Morris Chestnut. And all of, all of my people who grew up in black households, y'all know black moms do not play about Morris Chestnut at all. <laughs> but the LA Knights lose the game and Calvin has a run in with the coach outside of the arena. Tries to sell him some chocolate, but you know, Calvin's an upstanding protagonist. I'm not gonna lie to you. He, he better than me because when the coach pulled out a 20 or hundo, I can't remember which bill it was, but it was a large bill and only yeah. wanted chocolate one chocolate bar. bar. And Lil Bow Wow said, nah, I can't charge you for this. I don't, I don't even know if this money, money even really go to the orphan. What? Man, that's an upstanding citizen right there because I definitely would have pocketed that money. <laughs> but the coach winds up getting him some tickets to the next game and really? I figure he must know that they're gonna be out there hustling anyway so might as well come in and see the game so Calvin has a good run in with the coach he goes back to tell his boy Murph about you know the tickets whatever and then we flash to the next day it's an open house at the orphanage all the potential parents are coming through to meet the kids and obviously everyone wants to get adopted and this one kind of hits a little harder as an adult as a kid you don't really understand how heavy this scene is when Calvin is saying yo today's, today's the day the today's the day I get adopted and I Ox is giving him the reality check. And like, I know I said earlier that I don't like Ox, but now I'm like, the more I talk about it, I realize he's just a broken kid. Cause he looked at Calvin and just said, man, you ain't getting adopted. None of us are. Man, face it, we like dogs. Parents only want the puppies. Only the little kids is getting adopted. And the scene itself actually portrays that very well because all of the little kids are playing with toys, looking all cute, whatever. The parents are going up to them, giving them all the attention. While the older ones have gone above and beyond, got all dressed up looking nice want to shake hands want to meet parents and nobody is giving them the time of day as an adult it's almost something that pushes you to tears like it's like damn wh why do they have to go through it like this like i'm 25 years old now i don't got no kids but it made me look at them and say damn maybe maybe i need to maybe i need to adopt a kid if i if i have the financial means to do so you know what i'm saying i do not have the financial means to do so right now and i don't know when i when i'm gonna get to that point in life so don't quote me and put that kind of burden on my chest this early in life i'm still trying to figure out bilati all right <laughs> But like, you know, you gotta laugh to keep from crying. And this was a very emotional scene and it was very well acted. But just when Calvin's tight, you know, ready to give up on all of this, not give up in that sense, but give up in a sense like, yo, I'm over this day. I'm about to go back to the room, lay down for the day. One of the nuns of the orphanage brings, oh, Sister Teresa, that's her name. Sister Teresa comes over. They got, she got the donated clothes. And you know, it's coats, jackets, pants, whatever. And then, some sneakers pop out and it's some white and Carolina blue Nike blazers and the initials on the inside of the tongue MJ that's right he got shoes from the one the only the goat Michael Jackson yup he about the moonwalk all up and down the court the whole movie now nah, I'm just y'all already know it's Michael B Jordan those are the those are the sneakers that he got now Calvin realizes that these are Michael Jordan's old sneakers and he gets all hype he telling the crew like yo Michael Jordan wore these sneakers fam and then here come Ox and I know I just got done you know explaining his character a little bit more in depth and, and giving him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt but he came over and turned right back into a hoe ass nigga again cuz now he gonna he gonna take Calvin's shoes and say yo nobody ever gives us nothing good this is just abandoned junk that no one wants just like us whoa damn relax that wasn't what that one wasn't even emotional that one just felt like a straight up shot like bro fall back but then he takes calvin's sneakers and throws them up on the power line that like fam anyway y'all see the type of protagonist calvin is though all right he ain't going for that so what did he do what any of us would have done he snuck out in the middle of a thunderstorm around 3 a.m climbed up a tree onto the power line so that he could go get the sneakers and he did it successfully kind of i mean yeah he got struck by lightning in the process <laughs> but he came down with the sneakers and something happened when lightning hit him in those sneakers because now all of a sudden the sneakers is sparkling and now they look like they got some magic to them but we not gonna 
know what that magic really like until the next day. Now the next day they're back at the LA Knights game and this is the game that the coach left the tickets for for Calvin, right? So he brings the crew and he also brings Ox and his crew into the game too. I guess, you know what? They actually subtly explain it in the movie. He brought Ox and him just so he wouldn't get snitched on to Mr. Biddleman. Makes sense, right? But now we're seeing the true power of these sneakers because they're not just magic like we see later on in the in the movie. They also lucky as hell because they have this little, you know, the LA Knights is a struggling organization. Think of Charlotte Bobcats in 2011. That's how struggling this franchise is. And Tracy Reynolds is their Kemba Walker. Now, I don't know what NBA team would allow this, but in order to increase ticket sales, they have this contest where they, they raffle off all of the tickets from the arena and whoever wins the raffle gets to come down and 1v1 Tracy at halftime. Imagine winning a raffle at an NBA game and all of a sudden you're on the court in Cleveland about the 1v1 LeBron. What? Man! I'd be at every NBA game waiting for my shot, playing the lottery like I'm my grandparents or something. What? <laughs> But Calvin gets down there, and Tracy is his favorite player outside of Allen Iverson, apparently. So when he gets down there, he's like, yo, tea time. It's real nice to meet you. And Tracy is kind of like, yo, stop glazing, bro. Get off my dick. Nah, I'm just playing. He didn't say that. Nah, Tracy decided to take it easy on Calvin. He laced up his kicks, and Calvin got made his first shot. He made his first shot. He let him get a little layup. And Tracy's like, all right, all right, let me lock in. I, I'm only going to let this little boy score only once. Next thing you know, the, the sneakers took over. The, the magic of the sneakers kicked in. You, you know, you know the, the iconic make me like mike you know what i'm saying hey not only did Lil bow wow turn into michael jordan he started pulling like step too he hit tracy reynolds with the in and out snatch step back three ball give me three boom shout out to my boy ypk ray now he's cooking. Fans is on their feet like, yo, hold on. He look like he a bucket for real. Tracy getting serious now. He done took his warm up off. He getting a little sweat going. He talking shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a real game now. So obviously Calvin's just a kid. So he did what any kid would do. He threw that shit off the backboard and punched on him in front of 25,000 motherfucking people. What? Man, Calvin shut the gym down. Now don't get me wrong. The CGI behind that scene, questionable to say the least. However, seeing it back in the early 2000s, hey, hey, I was lit. I was lit. So the GM of the team saw that whole halftime show go down along with the rest of the crowd and the rest of the team and he has a bright idea he signs calvin to a one-day contract with the la knights for him to sit on the bench and play show pony essentially you know hey uh, the last guy who won our 1v1 at halftime he got to sit on the bench during the game yo everybody should come out hey see if he's actually gonna play they have no intent of playing him in this game but the coach sees something in cal like yo i, I saw okay, what you did okay, at okay. halftime Fam, you, you got, got some game. game. And what's crazy is no one else has that same realization. Like, Tracy was trying for those last two buckets that Calvin gave. All right? Tracy was trying. And this is an NBA player, an NBA star, mind you, according to them. So, hey, I would give him a chance. Shot. And they did. Once Calvin got into the game... Oh, he started hooping. He showed them, yo, I'm not just here to play show pony. I can actually hoop. Like, I really do this shit, even though it's the sneakers. But I really do this shit. And I felt that. I felt that, bro. Like, especially now. I felt that especially now. But we'll talk about that another time. He does so well in that game, leading them to a win, that they signed him for the rest of the season and making him the shortest and youngest player ever to sign a deal in the NBA. 13 years old, 4 foot 9. Oh, NBA game debut, 27 points. And he didn't miss a shot, man. That boy a bucket. You've heard of Steph Curry. You've heard of Michael Jordan. You've heard of Kevin Durant. You've heard of LeBron James. But the real GOAT is Calvin Cambridge. Now, after signing the contract, Biddleman gold digging ass want to tell Calvin, oh, you know you can't get adopted by anybody else because I signed your contract as your legal guardian, right? Which is a lie, but Calvin's just a kid, so he got to go along with it. And for the next few scenes in the movie, we see the NBA montage of all the NBA stars that come in and make appearances throughout the movie, like Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki, Alonzo Mourning, Chris Webber, Allen Iverson. The list goes on. Throughout these scenes, we also see Calvin developing a very close relationship with Tracy and it starts out looking more like big brother little brother kind of thing but Calvin is viewing it through the lens of father son because that's what he's seeking he wants to get adopted but in the back of his mind he's already written off Tracy like yo he's not gonna adopt me he, he ain't even who even got his own stuff figured out just like me for real you know what I'm saying <laughs> but it's not all glitz and glamour okay so the coach of the team finds out that Biddleman is hoeing Calvin and taking advantage of him you know what I'm saying even though Calvin been taking care of everybody in the orphanage buying the 
whole crew, electric scooters, got got everybody riding in style. Yeah, he putting his money to work, you know what I'm saying? And he's living a child's dream of playing in the NBA. But all he wants at heart is really a family, and you can't blame him for that. But like I said, it's not all glitz and glam. On top of Biddleman being a gold digger, the other orphans is getting kind of jealous. Even Calvin's boy Murph sees all the parents coming in and out of the orphanage. Calvin sees it, it's like, yo, this is great, isn't it? Murph is telling him, yo, all them here to see you. Don't do us no good. Go get adopted. Damn, like, now Biddleman has been exposed to Calvin at this point because obviously Calvin is like, yo, Murph, why are you tripping? And it comes to the, it comes to the realization, you know, Biddleman told me I couldn't get adopted. I thought all these parents was here for y'all. And that wasn't the case. But they kind of brush over that one. That one was an easy fix. You know, kids don't stay mad at each other that long, especially when they really locked in for real. You know what I'm saying? But with Biddleman being a liar and all, all of the pressure of, you know, living up to the expectations of being in the league, and then the interviews with these horrible ass parents. Like, Biddleman is, Biddleman is such a hoe ass nigga in this whole movie because Calvin finds out that he can be adopted. And he says, all right, I want to meet the parents then, basically. And Biddleman says, here, I'll we through the bunch and send the best candidates over to you. And he sent literally the worst parent. Like, nobody would want to be part of these families. Calvin is under so much stress that he decides to go over to Tracy's crib and talk about it all. And that's only making their bond even tighter. And Murph pulls up. You know, we get the we get the whole montage of them throwing paint and studying geometry. It makes more sense when you've actually seen the movie. I highly recommend that y'all see this movie. I should have said this at the beginning of the video. But if you ain't seen this movie, you're not a hooper for real. Every real hooper in within a certain age range. I'll say if, if you were born or have... Have older siblings if you're anywhere between the age of 20 and 30 and no I lied if you're anywhere between the age of I'm gonna go 18 to 30 or you have older siblings or anybody close to you that's between those ages you should have seen this movie like there's no excuse for not seeing this movie all right and if you're watching this video and you ain't seen like Mike click off come back later but go watch like Mike right now it's a classic now a lot of minor story threads happen throughout this time also like Calvin finds out that Tracy doesn't have the best relationship with his his father and he's baffled like yo bro that's all I want in life and you won't even talk to your dad you told me your parents were dead liar so they kind of fell off but everything comes back full circle and actually like fixes itself for the most part and then we get to the climax of the movie this is where Biddleman is trying to figure out how he could cash in on Calvin one last time because at this point in the movie Calvin is getting ready to get adopted right yeah this is actually fairly important so uh, if you've seen Family Matters Carl Winslow is is actually pretending to be Uncle Phil in this movie. So this fake ass Carl, Uncle Winslow, Uncle Phil, whatever wannabe, he's not my Uncle Phil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, nah, Carl Winslow comes in, you know, basically pretending to live Uncle Phil's life in Bel Air and says that he wants to adopt Calvin. And earlier in the movie, Calvin was watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air and said, I want a family like that to adopt. So all of that makes sense. It's just ironic that they got the dude from Family Matters instead of getting James Avery at the time. All right. Uncle Phil too, by the way, you know what I'm saying? But since Calvin's getting ready to get adopted, Biddleman gotta find one last way to cash out. And he pulls a Jonte Murray. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, but kinda. Biddleman finds out through Ox that Calvin is only playing well because it's the sneakers, right? So Biddleman takes it upon himself to steal Calvin's sneakers and then go and bet the under, basically. Like, Calvin is gonna have a horrible game. You know, they trying to make the playoffs as the Knights and they getting ready to play against Vince Carter and the Raptors. Another A-plus appearance in this movie. Right, but they get they get ready to go play the Raptors to make the playoffs, and Biddleman put a hundred K on the line. Whoa, all right. They like, yo, what makes you so confident? And he tells the goons that's in charge of the gambling. I'm pretty sure Calvin Cambridge is gonna have an off game. And I guess you know he puts them on to, yo, I found out that you know he's only playing well because of these sneakers, and he live in my crib for real. So I'm about to steal his sneakers, and then we gonna be up. I just wanna know why they believed him because now not only did Biddleman successfully steal the sneakers to the point where Calvin realizes before tip off of the big game that yo my sneakers ain't in my bag Murph gotta come clean like yo Biddleman stole them bro we gotta we gotta get it back in blood then we got some childish hijinks coming from that point they kidnap Biddleman tie him up in the chair but the game is going on the whole time and they trying to get the sneakers out the safe and that's when my boy Ox comes through at the end to save the day Calvin had to have real life heart to heart with him he like look here Ox look 
no matter what our difference is, you still want us. You're not one of him. Don't, don't, don't listen to Biddleman. He don't even care about you, bro. We've been here with you in the trenches since day one. Look out, fam. I got you that scooter outside. Ox looked at Calvin and was like, you right, fam. You did give me that scooter. I've been pulling mad holes in the orphanage since you got me that scooter. I owe that to you. I remember the combo to his safe. Let's go get your kicks. <laughs> nah, that's not that's not exactly what happens. But in my mind, as an adult, that's how I imagine that conversation going. Put me in charge of the reboot if we come out with another like Mike, because I got some funny ideas for the script. <laughs> Now, the hijinks continue because Calvin gets his sneakers back. Bitterman's still tied up in the chair. All of a sudden, he gets some superhuman strength and starts ripping through the tape and all of that to get out so he can chase the kids. And then, we got these generic-ass goons chasing these kids on the way to the arena, and they suck. Like, like, bro, these kids is on electric scooters in the early 2000s, and y'all are in full-blown automatic vehicles. Like, y'all are in real-life cars, and y'all can't catch them. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> but... Calvin does wind up making it to the game, and by the time he makes it, the Knights ain't doing too well. The Raptors is putting belt to ass. Like, Vince is windmilling on everybody, catching reverse lobs, and really just, just torching them. Calvin comes in, he's like, yo, coach, like, you gotta let me play. Coach is like, bro, you missed the whole first half, fam. I'm not about to play you. And the rest of the team steps up like, yo, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Play the kid. We can still win this, coach. So Calvin laced up his sneakers and started leading the comeback. Like, Calvin came in, again, doing what Calvin does, not missing a shot. We get all the way to the final seconds of the game, and loose ball, Knights get it back. Calvin's at the bottom of the dog pile, and the sneakers rip. It's over with now. It's over with. No more magic. He tells Tracy, yo, Tracy, it wasn't really me playing out there. It was the sneakers. Tracy, the sneakers were magic. Now they're gone. Tracy not trying to hear all of that, but Calvin like, yo, bro, I'm dead ass. I can't oop. Tracy tells him, yo, you gotta be brave, fam. You gotta go out there. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I'm Calvin, I'm like, no, bro, you, you don't understand me. I'm so dead ass right now. I can't hoop. These sneakers were the only, I didn't make a shot in my life before I got these kicks, fam. It's over with for me. Tracy not hearing all that tells him, lace up. We got a game to win. Calvin laces up and announces to the team, yo, this is gonna be my last game, fam. I'm ready to be a regular kid again. In actuality, this is what it, this is what he wanted to say in the back of his head. Whether we win or lose, this is gonna be my last game. Uh, Y'all not gonna believe me, but I actually got these mag magic sneakers after I got struck by lightning on this power line outside the orphanage. And yeah, I, I can't believe it. I'm really ass, but I was able to fake it. I made it, but now it's time for me to hang them up. <laughs> anyway, moving forward, obviously it's a kids movie. So the Knights wind up winning the game. Tracy hits the game winning shot off of Calvin's assist. I ain't gonna hold you. Calvin hit Vince with the meanest pump fake. And Vince just jumped way too high for his own good. Cause no way you got pump fake so bad that he ran under your legs. And then, but hold on. Why the Raptors send all five defenders at him low key? Nah, they really sent four. They had Vince on him. They had Vince on him. Pump fake, ran under his legs. Then they sent the triple team while Vince is out of bounds. Like, Vince is out the play. So now, not all, not, that's four, that's four defenders. And you mean to tell me you, out of the one defender that's left, you don't have him on the second best player? Tracy wide open. Kicks, like, Calvin kicks to Tracy. He's wide open. Shot, top of the key. Good. And then the confetti coming down. The the Knights win, the Knights win. You would have thought that they, you would have thought that they won the NBA Finals. But no, the confetti is coming down because they made the playoffs. So you mean to tell me that we did all of this just so you could be a first round exit? Okay, whatever. <laughs> nah, but after that, uh, Tracy winds up adopting Calvin and Murph, and it's a happily ever after, you know, ending to a movie. It, it's, 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 a, it's a real heartwarming film. It had its dark moments, not gonna lie to you, but it was a very heartwarming film. Now, now that we've gone through the plot, let's talk about the takeaways from this movie. I wanna start with the good. In my opinion, as a kid's basketball movie, it doesn't get much better than this, simply because the premise is every kid's dream. We've all been kids standing out in the driveway, shooting hoops or in an empty gym, or even when you throwing away a piece of trash and you fantasize, use your imagination that you in the league playing against your favorite player and hitting game winning shots and and that they took that and said yo what if it was real and the execution behind it was amazing the execution behind it couldn't have been much better they had real nba players real nba teams not only were these players able to come in 
and make appearances on screen, the ones that had lines, they actually did a pretty good job. Now, granted, they just had to be themselves on camera, but if we are familiar with any of those 2K14 cutaway scenes, y'all know what I'm talking about. It ain't, it ain't always easy for NBA players to do anything in the entertainment business. So them being able to come into this movie and give a good performance that was not only entertaining, but also believable, chef's kiss i think the only negative takeaways is really la knights instead of la lakers that ass even the basketball scenes made sense like the basketball scenes i didn't feel like i was watching actors that couldn't really hoop and they had a whole bunch of stunt doubles this looked like yo what if this kid was just dumb nice and was in the league like <laughs> there, there's no other there's no other way to explain it now the only real negative takeaway that i have from this movie is what happens to biddleman because they they subtly allude to like like something bad happened to him they were like yo no one's seen him since calvin's last game something about a bet that he didn't have the money to cover they they killed him they killed him that that had to be what happened they, they killed him he's sleeping with the fishes or they broke his thumbs or something like something bad happened to him and he either has a fake identity in hiding in puerto rico with tupac or he's sleeping with the fishes those are the only two options and that's kind of dark for for a children's movie <laughs> But those are, those are the things where you put in jokes and themes for the adults so that they can be just as entertained as the kids are as they're watching this, you know, ridiculous uh, hijinks and all of that. But now it's the time that everybody's waiting for. Where are we ranking this movie? What tier am I going to put it in? All right, not going to lie, not going to lie. I know a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all are feeling like this should be, what, A tier? I'm going to go out on the limb and just say, this is S tier for me. This is right up there. I feel like this is a better movie than Space Jam. And for what its job is as a kid's movie, it's just as good, if not maybe even better than what Coach Carter's job is as a more mature, dramatic basketball movie. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. So, so far we've gone through Coach Carter, Space Jam, and now we just finished Like Mike. The Big Lighty Breakdown series is going great. We're going to be more consistent trying to get these up every single week. So if we're going to do that, I need the means to do so. So I need y'all to like, comment, and subscribe. So I know that I've asked y'all to comment two things so far in this video. But I'm just going to ask y'all to comment one more thing before we get up out of here. What movie should we do next? Big Lighty Gang, fours up. Y'all know the vibes for me is peace, love, and happiness to everybody continue to stay safe out there make sure that y'all tune in for the next video till next time we out